Hey, welcome to Five Lakes Garage, the home of random projects. We have lists, we have Jeeps, we have trucks, we have food. You name it, we got it. So help out the channel by just hitting that subscribe button. And if you like the video, go ahead and like it. And if you really like the video, like it and then tell a friend. But stay tuned, enjoy yourself. I'm gonna let you go because I got stuff to do. Welcome back to the channel and today we're actually going to start a project that's going to take two days to finish actually only 24 hours but it's okay it's going to take a little bit of time but it's going to be worth it today we're actually going to cook a pizza in the Bortello pizza oven if you saw the last video you know all about it we're going to have to make some poolish yes it's called poolish p-o-o-l-i-s-h and what it is, is the, it's basically a starter for your dough. Now the dough is gonna take uh, over a day to actually complete, but once it's done, mm, it's gonna be so good. So what we need to do is actually have a few ingredients for this poolish. Uh, first thing you're gonna do is you gotta measure things. A lot of recipes come with cups, they come with uh, teaspoons, that type of stuff. This one's gonna be in milliliters and grams. Okay, so I got my little, Little scale. I had to go rob my Cub Scout stuff because I usually use this to measure how heavy cars are. So first thing we're going to do is we need 300 milliliters of water. Second thing we're going to need is oh, flour. Yes, we go through a lot of flour. Um, but anyway, so yes, we need flour. We're going to need yeast. Now this right here is just a regular dry yeast that we use for quite a bit of other things. Uh, we stick it in the refrigerator and it lasts a really long time. Also, you're gonna to need to give this yeast, because this is a bacteria, this is alive, and I'm just shaking it up and giving them all headaches. But it's okay, because they need something to eat. So, what we're we gonna use? We're gonna use honey. Yeah. Um, you can use sugar, you can use maple syrup if you have it, you can use whatever has sugar in it, because the yeast is gonna eat off the sugar. And you wanna put yeast in there to go It's gonna grow. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We need to start measuring things out, and this is how you measure it properly. All right, so we got our scale. We just got a cup sitting right on top. We're gonna turn it on. Wait for a second. Okay, we are in milliliters, so that's what we want because we're gonna do the water. All right, so now it's at zero. I put this on, and you're reading at 605 milliliters. Well, obviously it's empty, so we're gonna zero that out. Until zero, zero, boom, zero. Now we're just gonna add water till we hit 300. Whoop. See, got a little, little anxious. So uh, you just pour a little bit back. Start again. 304, I'm happy with that. I can live with that. How about you, Cor Corbin? Can you live with that? Sure. Ah, it's such a bundle of laughs. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is measure out the flour. So we're gonna zero it out again. All right, so we need grams for that, so we're gonna hit the unit. Pounds, grams, zero grams. Let's start getting 300 grams of flour. All right, I'm just gonna use a, a quad out of a cup. All right, so now we have our flour, we have our water, now we need our yeast and also our, um, our yeast and the honey. So we're gonna put this back on there. So we're just gonna add yeast. We can zero it back out again to make it easier for you to see. So we just need five grams of this stuff. There we go, five grams. And the good thing is, is I get to lick the lid. Mmm. This honey actually came from Mr. Gaoviak. You've probably seen him in a couple other videos. He is a certified beekeeper. And it's always better to get locally sourced honey. All right, so let me get a spoon. 
All right, so now we need five grams of the yeast. Well, that's it. That's good enough. Yeah, put a little extra. Why not? All right, so we got five grams of yeast. So now here comes the hard part. We can put this away. We're going to take the water that we already measured out. And then we get to mix that all in. There you go. Now we got some Porsche. Polish. So what we're going to do is let it sit here for about an hour at room temperature. And then we're just going to put the lid on it and stick it in the refrigerator overnight. We want to let it sit there for at least 16 to 24 hours. And the reason to do that is that all of that yeast is going to eat up that honey, make this expand, and it's going to turn a little soupy. And it's going to ferment. And this is the key to make your dough awesome. Okay, so it is the next day, and our poolish mm, has been fermenting, fermenting all night long. Look at that. Doesn't that look beautiful? Yeah. Oh, man, it smells awesome. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and make the pizza dough itself. And one, a couple of things that we're going to need is that we're going to need 1,250 grams of flour. I know that looks like a lot, but it's okay. Once you get done with what you need, you can freeze the rest. It's actually pretty good. Also, what you're going to need is 700 milliliters of water. And of course, you're going to need some salt. Now, I just have some uh, basic sea salt in here. It's about 40 grams of it. Now, how do I get all these measurements? Well, just like we did with the Polish uh, last night, we're going to measure it. We have our little food scale. So we're going to turn it on. All right, so go ahead and measure everything out. Measure out your flour at 1,250 grams. Measure out your water at 700 milliliters. So now let's make our, our dough. It's gonna be awesome. Can't wait. All right, so we have our 700 milliliters of water in our bowl. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our Polish that we made last night. Mm, get a close up of that. Doesn't that look awesome? All right, so we're just gonna get this out and put it into our water. Now this is room temperature water. All right, you're gonna stir this all in till it breaks up. All right, once you have all that incorporated, we're gonna take our flour and we're only gonna do about half. All right, once it actually is nice and mixed up, we're gonna grab our salt, pour that in, and mix it up. All right, once your salt is already mixed in, go ahead and add the rest of your flour. All right. Now you get to mix all that in. All right, make sure your surface is nice and clean. And we're gonna put just a little bit of flour down. We're just gonna pour everything that we had in our bowl right down here on the counter. Or a cutting board, whatever one you got. Whatever you like to use, I like to use the, the counter. There we go. So we have our dough out here on the counter. Kinda looks like a big sloppy mess, but that's okay. Go ahead and de-ring yourself. And what you're gonna do is actually bring it up, push it in, and push, push. And you're making folds all inside. Make sure you get all your flour in there. It's kinda of like you're making biscuits. I'm gonna make some biscuit pizza. <laughs> okay, got yourself a ball. Got plenty of stickiness all over you, but that's okay. So if it is a little too sticky, got a plan for you. So it is a little bit sticky, so we're just gonna take our bowl, flip it on top. We're gonna leave it for 15 minutes and then come right back. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes. Let's see what she looks like. Fantastic. All right, so this is a very important step. We're gonna have, uh, I got a little misto here that's full of regular, good old fashioned olive oil. 
unless you're in from Georgia and then it's old. Anyway, so this is a very important step. So what you want to do is actually go underneath and basically you're curling it on inside. You see, I'm starting to get sticky. Grab some more oil. So once you have your ball, there you go. All right, so we have our ball. All right, so once you have your ball all ready, you want to take your bowl, give it some olive oil, just give it some love. Okay, so with your dough ball here, this is going to be your top. Always going to be the top, never the bottom. So what we want to do, get our bowl, put some more oil in my hand, so it doesn't stick. And then we're going to scoop it up. Just like this, grab your bowl and boop, there you go. So we're gonna let this sit and proof up for about an hour. And then once that is done, we are going to start making our dough balls. All right, so it's been about an hour. Let's see what we got. There you go, it proofed up a little bit. She feels kind of pretty firm, good job. All right, so what we're gonna do now is actually gonna put it down, back down on the counter, and we're gonna pull it off into different balls. Once you get the balls set up, you're gonna put it on your pan. Now go ahead and put a little bit of uh, flour down so it does not stick to the pan so much. And what we're gonna do is actually put a few of these on here, leave about three fingers in between each ball because they will expand. It is yeast and it will grow. So remember, the top needs to stay on top. So I have my olive oil. All up in the hands. Oh, I forgot to take my ring off. That's gonna suck later. All right, so let's work this dough. Bam. It's like a baby butt. Bam. All right. All right, so we're making pizza. Get yourself a good pizza cutter. And all we're gonna do is, uh, now depending on how many pizzas you actually wanna make, uh, the pizza oven that we have right now is only a 12 inch. So that's about as big as we're gonna get. So, slice her down. All right. There you go. So, with a little bit more olive oil, because you do not want it to stick to your hands. Okay, so keeping the top on top, we're just gonna fold it in and basically take it if you flip it over, see it's all going into the center. And the top is getting nice and round. Look at that, that is beautiful. And then we're gonna stick it on our pan. There you go, nice and pretty. I'll stick that in the bowl because I ran out of pan. All right, so what you want to do is actually coat a little bit of olive oil on top of each one. And the only reason why you're doing that is because you don't want the saran wrap to stick. All right, we're going to let this sit in the pan, let it proof up for about another hour. And I know what you're thinking. Why on earth are you going through this much trouble? Trust me when I tell you this will be worth it. And actually, I'm going to show you, I'm going to look down below and I'm gonna show you the link of the guy that I learned it from, which has been fantastic, and I do thank him for it. All right, while that's proofing up, we gotta make our sauce. Now, what we do is I get a little Cento uh, Italian peeled tomatoes. And what I'm gonna do with that, well, first I'm gonna open it. All right, so we're gonna open up the can. All right, this is where I'm gonna deviate a little bit from the guy I learned it from. So we have our tomatoes. All right, I'm gonna put all these in my pot. Now I know a lot of people, they don't do this, but this is the way I do it. All right, you're gonna stick them all inside the pot. All right, I'm gonna grab a hold of some pink salt. Uh, this is from the Himalayas. I do like it a little bit better. It has a much stronger taste and you don't have to use as much. So, a couple good cracks in there. Also, we're going to crack with some fresh pepper. Okay. Mmm, I, 
wish we had smell of vision All right, then I'm gonna add some garlic because mostly because we love garlic um, Usually I'd take get some fresh stuff, but hey, I'm just gonna take it out of the can That's just gonna work for today. All right Okay, yeah, well this so I'm just gonna let this simmer for a few minutes and then I'm gonna hit it with the merging blender blend all those big tomatoes up and then this guy will be ready to go on the pizza all right so uh, we do have our uh, sauce over there cooking uh, I did put some oregano and some basil in there just to spice it up just a little bit <clears throat> but uh, I already hit it with the merging blender so it's nice and smooth so it'll be ready for our pizza now the next thing you want to do is actually go through and get all of your condiments everything that you want to have on your pizza uh, in our particular household, we do love some pepperoni. I do use the turkey pepperoni. I think it tastes better. And not only that, it will crisp up the edges in the pizza oven, and it is beautiful. Also, I like to put a little bit of Parmesan down there on the, on the base right before we put our mozzarella on. Um, I do like some green peppers, and I went ahead and chopped up a little bit of red onion. Uh, now for the mozzarella, we're going to use some fresh mozzarella and we are going to cut this a certain way in order for it not to burn as bad. So, let's go cut all that up. Okay, so we're going to cut these into small little uh, chunks, but we're not going to make it too small. If you make it too small, then you have a problem with it. Uh, it won't melt all the way out and then it will start burning. So we're gonna do half inch cubes. Mmm, that's some good mock. All right, I'm not gonna cut up all of it, only because I'm Lito. Mmm. I just gotta stop eating it. See, this is all we're gonna do. Uh, cut it up in little slices like this. This will actually melt right on your pizza and you should be good to go. But I need another bowl. I'm put my cheese back away so I can use some of it later. Then we're gonna go out and cook a pizza. All right, welcome to my fantastic backyard. And now it is ready to put this pizza together. As you can see, the dough has been proofing. It has been rising. Um, ideally, I would like to let it go for about another 15, 20 minutes, but I am starving and I need to get this stuff done. So I have all of my condiments out here on, on the table. And also, one other thing that you're gonna need, you're gonna need a bowl, and then you're gonna need to put some flour in it. Now, the flour, I'm gonna show you that in a second, uh, because you don't want this stuff to stick. And also, if you caught my last video, you saw everything that came with the box from my Bordatello pizza oven. It comes with a peel. You should really get a peel. This is the first time I'm actually using a peel like this, a nice metal one. It is awesome. I've been using a wooden one all, all this time. What the heck was I thinking? Anyway, all right, let's get this party started. All right, let's unpackage our dough ball. All right, remember, the stuff on top wants to stay on top. So we're going to put it in your flour. Flip it over. You're going to do that a couple of times. Now just remember which way is your top. All right, once you get done with that, you can put it on your pan. Or in this case, my cutting board. Now there's going to be a certain way of actually uh, kneading this dough. You could use a roller, not recommended, because it takes all the air bubbles out. We want to keep air bubbles in there so we can get that nice fluffy crust and crunchy on the outside. All right, so we're going to dip in the middle, and then we're going to push. Basically, we're pushing all of the air to the outside. Now, once you actually get to about, about eight inches or so, you're going to take it up. You're going to hold it and pull. Spin it, hold it, and pull. Because you want to get the centerpiece nice and thin, but leave the outside nice and fluffy. All right, so once you get done with that, then you can put your hands inside and stretch it out. So you're using the, the weight of the dough itself, and also you're going to roll your thumbs. And that will actually pull it out. Can't quite see through it, but almost. All right, that is looking good. Oh, I can't wait. You know, the guy I learned this from, he says making pizza is an art, art form. I want to say he is absolutely positively correct. All right, let's make it nice and round because we are making a pizza pie. Need to make it nice and round. All right, 
So now we need some sauce. And I know what you're thinking. And no, this table is just stained. It's not dirty. I cleaned it. <laughs> All right. So now we need a little bit of Parmesan. Now I'm just going ahead and place a few of these around. Ah. Okay, so I have my cheese out there. A little bit of pepperoni. Mm. Some onions. Voila, that's all you really need. So now all you're gonna do is grab a hold of your peel. Now, what you wanna do is just pinch the side and go from this side. There we go, all right. So maybe this uh, plastic table wasn't the best idea, but it's okay, we're gonna make it work. Fix all your toppings so you can slide it right in. Okay, so are we finished? No, because now we gotta cook it. All right, so one thing about this pizza oven, that is 900 degrees on that deck. It is scorching hot. And what you wanna do is actually stick it in, and then you're gonna time it. 15 seconds, rotate it. 15, 10 to 15 seconds, depending on how hot you actually have it. I'm gonna turn it down just a bit. Um, so yeah, so check this out. I'm just gonna cook this up real quick. Stick it in. Come on, get off my thigh. There we go. All right, time it. See how quick it actually cooks that side? I need to work on my flick. All right, there you go. So it is going to still be cooking, but check out that crust. Oh, look at that. It's crispy on the outside, but soft and chewy on the inside. I think I might have my burner up a little too high. We'll try it on the next one. All right, I had a little too many toppings on there. But we're gonna try a piece. Oh, that crust looks so awesome. And it's hot. All right, this thing cooks really fast. It is less than a minute to cook an entire pizza. Now you do have to prep a little bit more. Some people like their vegetables a, a little bit, mm, maybe broiled or something like that. Well, this fast is not gonna cook that vegetable that fast. But take a look at that crust. Oh, look how soft that is. All that air. It is beautiful. The bottom, as you can see there, nice and cooked. The onion, mm, not cooked. I love. I like it. Just got some crunch to it. It is fantastic. So let's see how it tastes. Ooh, that's hot. Mmm. Yeah, oh my gosh, this is so good. Man, that is so good. Yeah. Hey, what? I'm gonna go get Rachel, so she can make one. I know she can. Mmm. Okay. That's good crust. So that's how easy it is to actually cook a pizza in a Bortello pizza oven. No, they're not a sponsor. I just picked it up and it's awesome. Um, I'm still trying to perfect everything else. I think I'm going to perfect my toppings a little bit more. Maybe uh, hit it in the broiler first so I can just get it a little bit crispy. And then stick them on there. And also i got to work on my technique on spreading the dough. But that's a really good dough. Uh, definitely recommend using a uh, the Polish. Uh, that is definitely the way to go. I appreciate the guy for uh, recommending that. And again, check down below. I'll put his link down there because it is it's a pretty good video. Appreciate it. So anyway, if you have any questions, give me a uh, put it down in the comments or send me an email, whichever. But enjoy your pizzas because I need to get this thing eaten. All right. Take a look at it next time when we cook something else. And I'm pretty sure it might be another pizza. Or breadsticks. Ooh, cheesy sticks. Stay tuned.